Have you checked the children? <laughs> Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower as I'm Ian Fuego, and if you please join me here for a bit of palaver on Hail to Stephen King. And uh, yes, I'm not sure when this is actually going to air proper because Psy King decided to just drop randomly without any forewarning a short story called Red Screen on us today. And uh, you have to most definitely give some affection to Humble Bundle, which is the charity group that King decided to work with specifically for this title. And obviously, Bevanitas and welcome to the horror show, guys. And uh, yeah, so Humble Bundle uh, has a sort of charity situation going on that King decided to work with. And they give 100% of the proceeds to specific charities, and in this case, it's the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU. King chose them specifically, so regardless of your political affiliations or convictions or whatever or not, that you have to give at least $5 in donation to Humble, and that's how you have access to this story. And lo and behold, the story is only available for one week, so if you toss them at least five buckaroos, but that you can also, if if you are a big fan of the ACLU and Humble in general, you can give them far more than that. It is one of those name your own donation sort of situations. And uh, that all the just, uh, you know, social and political misgivings aside, let's talk very briefly about this story because the story is relatively brief. I mean, being an ebook, it has, it has 17 different screens, you know, 17 pages, so to speak. But really, when you get past like the title page and there's a couple different title pages, it's really around like a dozen pages, if we're going to be fair about it. And it is a story about a gentleman by the name of Wilson, who is a police officer in New York City. And he is called after a after a morning where his wife is being relatively naggy. Uh, Stacy, I think his wife's name was St. Uh, yeah, yeah, Stacy. And uh, in any event, so he starts his morning out with. You know, his wife griping about, oh, you didn't wash out your ice cream dish and, and, you know, you put it in the dishwasher anyway and you forgot to put the, you know, lid back on the toothpaste of all things. So, yes, we're talking about the stuff that likely happens, especially with older couples. I feel like there is probably more of an essence of that sort of nitpicking, the picking and picking and picking, and we get to that later on in the story. But that's how Wilson starts his day as he uh, ends up getting a call to go and interrogate this dude by the name of, uh, well, Leonard Lenny, as he is known to most of his friends, who was a plumber who has killed his wife. And once again, the story is very brief, and so you have to think that there's not that there's not going to be a lot that Psy King can really expound upon in this particular sort of situation. And Red Screen deals very specifically with a type of paranoia signal that um, this this guy Lenny is certain is going down. And so that's where I'm I'm trying not to spoil anything. This is a non-spoiler review, everybody. But once again, it's really just a rumination on couples and how it's wives can be naggy. I mean, that's really the, the way that I can totally boil it down. And yes, it's a stereotype in that regard, but really, I mean, it's it's a trope that has been seen and uh, explored countless times, but you know, King doesn't really do quite as much with this story as I think I was hoping he was going to. It's when you have the, the constraints of length I, I mean, there's really not much that you can do to make things interesting. I mean, yes, I know that there is stuff like one sentence uh, horror stories, like this sort of imminent uh, just sense of dread that people are trying to condense more so and more so and more so. And I think that that's really because of the fact that we are in this like TikTok consumer culture where I, I love quoting basketball all the goddamn time where he's like, Kids with your loud music and your Dan Fogelberg, your Zima, hula hoops, and Pac-Man video games. Don't you see? People today have attention spans that can only be measured in nanoseconds. 
nanoseconds. And yeah, that's why stories of this length and even shorter, as I just mentioned, have their sense of popularity. But it really does make it tough to really have any sort of resonance and, and, and relevance, I and mean, you have to be incredibly skilled. And that's not to say that the dialogue isn't snippy and interesting between these two, because when, you know, Wilson sits down with Lenny and he's trying to just kind of figure out, why did you kill your wife? You know, what was the motivation? He has a big, hackneyed, otherworldly, dark web covered sort of motivation, and it's not that far off from like, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is mentioned at one particular point, and yet, really, at, at the root of this, it's like, okay, do our partners get more scrutinous of us over time? And I would imagine that, it, I don't know, you get more okay with the quirks and nuances of somebody you've spent all that time with as opposed to, like, picking them apart more so and more so, but hey, I've only been in a handful of relationships myself in my life, most of them of that long-term variety, and so, yeah, I, I would think you become more accepting of those quirks, but, you know, the, it, it is what it is. I know every single situation is different, just like I always contend on here that art is subjective, but yeah, it's really just nagging wife initially, and dude, uh, being Wilson, is called to interrogate and break things down, and he gets some very hackneyed and odd theories from Lenny that really are relevant to his own situation. And so that's why it's fascinating, and yet I wanted more from this, and it's, it's not one of King's short stories where it's long enough to really just completely encompass the idea, I think, and, and once again, red screen, without getting into spoiler territory, red screen, the title being the, it's almost like, if you're familiar with Star Trek, the red alert sort of situation, you're just like, okay, this is the red flag, the red screen, as to what is potentially and really going on, something beyond just a partner that is picking you apart and being nagging and all of that other stuff. So yeah, ironically enough, Wilson does find, at least for a brief moment, some sort of camaraderie, dare I say, with the guy who killed his wife, this crazy plumber who is apparently in tuned and just perceptive and aware of so much more of what is really going on than the average person is. And so, yes, once again, invasion of the body snatchers sort of thing. Less exorcist, more invasion of the body snatchers. So we're not talking like other, we're not talking ghostly possession in his theories sort of thing. But uh, yeah, uh, I would have liked more and it was enjoyable enough, but really just to get down to it, and I know it's tough to really fill as much time in a video of this nature when the story was so freaking short, but that King had a, another short story a few years ago where it was about this widowed guy and he adopts a pet and there's a crocodile and he's down in Florida. I found that story and the title is eluding me, unfortunately, I should have double checked before I started filming this video, but yeah, I, I, I didn't, but uh, that was one that was released for free and that I greatly preferred in comparison with this one. That's the thing, there was very interesting ideas here and yet that other story that I just mentioned, you know, with the widowed guy, it felt very contained and that, you know, there was a start, a beginning and an end, whereas this one felt like it was just like a precursor to something that could have been much bigger and to being a short story based on what King has done in his short stories, everybody knows that he is, if you're a well-versed constant reader especially, that he, he kind of Twilight Zones it, Outer Limits, EC Comics, that sort of thing. So yeah, um, expect that, I suppose, you know, but then again, it's a hallmark of his short stories to have that kind of like twist, like woo sort of ending, and that's the extent of my thoughts on red screen, I guess, and uh, I'm like barely at the 10 minute mark, so that's where I, I wonder if I should actually make this like a full on video, or if, the, because there's really so little to discuss, or if I should just release it as like a little bonus segment or anything, I don't know. You will see this at some particular time very soon. The story just came out today on September 9th, which is my baby brother's birthday, 
Dave Mann, I love you, dude. September is a big month for not just the Califam, uh, my own birth DZ, but obviously on the 21st, we will be celebrating Psy Kings. I'm still trying to figure out the specifics of what we're gonna do to celebrate that momentous day. It could be a live show. It might be a, another team up with Mike Kearns from Mike's Book Reviews. Just not 100% uh, about what it's all gonna entail, but uh, yes, we are in the planning stages and it is certainly gonna be fun. I extend a grande gracias. I have been Javier Fuego and you can find more on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on the YouTubies as well. Uh, the like, the share, the subscribe stuff, it is all significantly appreciated appreciated and uh, the Hail to Stephen King Facebook group. That is something that I have to point everybody out to. It's what really gets me on the fake book. Amazing peeps on there. Terrific. Just, you know, Kef and Palaver amongst everybody there. And uh, yes, I am the sole admin and operator, moderator and all that different stuff. So yes, jump on and have some great discussion about not just Psy King, but his entire extended family, whether it's Joe Hill, uh, Owen, Tabby, and the lot. And that's another thing, I guess, as it just suddenly occurs to me, like, is Tabby Nagy with Psy King? I'm really curious if, especially at their ages, you know, being in their 70s and stuff, uh, I'm not sure of Tabby's age. I, I think they were, I mean, they were both in college at the same time, so they both gotta be like right around there, like late 60s, early 70s, and uh, yeah, is this King trying to be like, yo, my wife nags at me for, for getting to wash out my ice cream dish or for having a cigarette or whatever the hell it is because we know that King still indulges in the cancer sticks here and there. But uh, yeah, uh, interesting food for thought, I suppose. And uh, yeah, yeah, we, I, I still have yet to read any of Tabby's stuff. And uh, same with Owen. And I've been curious about covering, because I've read everything Joe, but uh, since I wasn't the biggest fan of Sleeping Beauties, and then I think Tabby stuff is very difficult to track down, unfortunately, from the basis of my estimation. And uh, yeah, there is still that essence of curiosity, though, about uh, you know everybody that King holds near and dear, and the fact that all, aside from his daughter, are all uh, creatives, you know, between his wife and his two sons. And so that's a big thing. But before I forget. The book of the month. We just got done discussing the regulators and that was a joy to just jump back to and get reacquainted with. But yes, the twinner book of that uh, is uh, none other than Desperation, which you can kind of see back there in this brightly lit sort of area. But yes, that is the book of the month for September. September, if we're gonna be specific and get all Hispanic with it and stuff. And uh, you know, I mean, being Fuego and everything, have to do that. But uh, yes, for its anniversary, last month we did the regulators, and then this month we are doing Desperation. So the first. Tuesday of October is going to be a live discussion about desperation, which it's almost 700 pages. So compared to the regulators, which is a brisk little read, desperation entails a little bit more dedication, but it is well worth it. And I am extremely excited to be revisiting that one live with all of you. So look forward to that. And uh, that's gonna be the end of the proceedings today, everybody. So until the Wheel of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, San amigos, constant readers and viewers alike say thank you. I hope we have been well met and that we get to share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. And until then, remember to stay Stay scared and read Stephen King. That's crazy. So, yes, Humble Bundle is where you can find this new short story. Red Screen.